for a build up, it's still gonna look very nice, well proportioned, and it gives you options of either the single seat or the twin seat. Hello, this is VJ from Hearns Hobbies, and today I'm gonna to be looking at this Italeri kit of the TR1A slash B. So what's a TL-1? Well, this is actually better known as the U2, or Dragon Lady. So U2 was a, a spy plane developed in the 1950s. Uh, they actually started uh, designing this in 1954, and it started flights in 1955, and operations uh, after that. So it was used uh, during, um, uh, let's say, early parts of the, oh, that wouldn't be early, would it? 1960s of the Cold War, and famously, uh, one of these was shot down uh, over Russia, uh, with Gary Powers at the uh, at the helm, and then another one was shot down uh, during uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. But in all in all, since the 1950s, uh, these are uh, been quite successful on their operations, and they're still being used today. So highly modified form, uh, basic shape though, and uh, it's one of the longest serving aircraft in the U.S. military. So the TR-1 is the original design, and the A is a single seater, which is one down the bottom here. And the B is the trainer, which has got that bubble for uh, the training pilot as well. Okay, so let's have a look here. Actually, that bubble there is probably for... Actually, I don't know. Maybe someone can tell me who's the actual training pilot and who is the instructor. So you've got your box art there. It's very typically Italeri type box art. Nice and clean, uh, very blue. And then you've got the actual license here from Lockheed Martin. And this is uh, one of the newer kits which uh, incorporate what they call super decals. And they give you four options for the markings. All right, so let's have a look inside. All right, so we have our decals. So there's the super decals here. Have a closer look at those a bit later. Let me put that protective film back on them. Then we have the manual as well, which I'll pop over here. All right, so we have a couple of bagged parts, all in black. It makes sense to have this in black because the aircraft was predominantly painted in black. So rather than start with lighter colors and then having to use a lot of paint to cover it, having black makes sense. So you don't have to use a lot of paint. There's chances of covering up all your details. Okay, let's pop this aside and we'll have a look at each one of these. Okay, so we've got our first bag here. Got all our fuselage components. All right, so a selection of clear parts. Got a few bits falling off here. These are for the uh, side pontoons. Okay, you see those there. Very bullet shaped. And here's our canopy components. All right, so let's do a bit of a zoom. Have a close look at all these. So being 48 scale, I mean, it's reasonably big. You have to remember that this had a huge wingspan. So let's have a look actually at this part here. This is the back of the fuselage. Okay, so that's going towards the, uh, the engine nozzle. You can see the, uh, the details here. So this is an earlier mold. It's actually got uh, raised panel details. So I'm gonna focus in better on that. Okay, so these are all raised, which isn't a bad thing, but I guess everyone does expect them to be recessed these days to allow um, washers to go in place. But I guess seeing that this is going to be black anyway, any wash that's going to go on is going to be quite a light color. So I guess a raised detail is not a bad thing if you're going to be dry brushing that detail on. Obviously, if you don't like that, you can always sand it down smooth and re- um, itch all of those um, panel lines in there with a, a panel scraper. You can see the wing roots there, the slots for accepting uh, the wings and for their alignment. Got this, this is the bubble section here, so that's the optional part for the B. So you've got two sets of cockpits. Okay, so you've got one for the instructor and one for the uh, uh, the trainee pilot. There's those pontoons that are mounted underneath the wings. Got your seats. Two rails there for the ejector seats. Undercarriage doors. Got the uh, control columns here. Okay, 
Okay, you've got your joysticks here, the control. This looks like a, a canopy frame. And then this part is probably, I don't know. Oh, there's the undercarriage. Okay, so you've got undercarriage wells. That one and that one. And then you've got the undercarriage right here. So you've got a main in the center. And it's probably a smaller one for the uh, front end. Okay, so that's that one there. Let's move that across without losing all these bits. All right, let's have a close look at the clear. Might be a bit hard to see these clear parts. But you can see how they're individually cut. So you just need to match those up if you're going to have those closed canopies. I mean, as you can see earlier, this is a sort of older kit. So it's only the more modern kits where they'll give you options where it'll be a one-piece canopy so you avoid all the gaps if you're going to have it closed and then a separate lot with them open. Okay, so you've got the uh, the regular A type and then the optional bubble as well for the B type, the additional cockpit at the back. All right, and then you have this bag here. Whoops, let's go back to the wide. All right, so we've got all of our wings and you can see how massive they are. Okay, so I've got two sets of sprue. You've got uppers and lowers. And again, these details are all pronounced. And again, if you don't like that, you can always rescribe it. Okay, so let's have a closer look. Okay, there's a raised detail that I was talking about on that wing. It's still reasonably fine though. Okay, so you've got the molded in control surfaces. This is where those big long pylon type, uh, I don't know what they are, are they actually tanks? They could be. That's where they're mounted. The framework. There's a horizontal stabilizer. Okay, so that's that sprue. And then you've got the other side. which is pretty similar, but obviously it's got uh, the opposite size components. So again, you can see the raised detail. Now raised, raised detail is one of those things that made making a mold easier. If you can just imagine a mold is the reverse of the item that I'm showing you now. By engraving into the mold, it's a lot simpler than having a, uh, to do a recessed uh, panel line. You actually have to have all these raised in the mold. This is the opposite. So that's something that's quite easily done now, but when these sort of early molds were made, this is definitely the easiest way to do it. And when you're talking about raised detail, these are actually quite, quite fine. Okay, so there you go. So that's all the components. So it is a fairly simple uh, kit. Now let's have a closer look at these decals. All right, so you've got the decal sheet. There's a protective paper we'll put over there. Really highly um, uh, quite intense, I guess you call it. Uh, quite saturated colours here. Let's see by the ink here. So let's focus that about there. All right, so you've got the A option. That's C option there, and B. And then you've got all these large. markings and a walk uh, lines. You got uh, quite a lot of fine stenciling there as well. You can see that these are the um, what they call the super decal. I don't even see but uh, I can get the reflection coming through. The, uh, the carrier film is really thin. And down here you can see these are printed by Zacchetti uh, of Italy. 
So, not cartograph, but it's still very, very nice. Okay, so there are your decals. Pop that there. And then we get into our manual. Okay, so you've got this big, long manual. It's got uh, various languages here as well. So there's a little bit of a history of the aircraft. Open up, we have the legend of all the parts and how to find them. And then we start in the construction. So over here, we've got... Uh, uh, building of the cockpit so if you're doing the single seat version then you only build this B section here or if you're doing the uh, the twin seater then you do this one here as well okay so you can see here where we've got the cockpit going into place the B version with the additional cockpit across the top undercarriage wells being put together so you've got the rear end and then the main undercarriage uh, gear in the center closing up the rear of the cockpit so if you're using the single seater there's a blanking uh, off panel and then with the two seater you've got the additional bubble there for the additional glass from there we get into applying the wings the uh, horizontal stabilizers the nose uh, then the engine intakes you've got the uh, pods on the pylons I'm not actually pylons, it's actually part of the wing. In tips of the wings as well. And then we finalize as we're getting into the undercarriage here, which is the uh, tail dragger, the main undercarriage in the center of the fuselage. And then you've got the guide wheels just on each side of the wings. And as we open up here, we've got the marking options. Okay, so that's version A. Version B. And then you've got this grey tone, or is it, no it is, a, it's a white, that's probably an insignia white tone for the B version for the training option. Oh there's another one there, so a black training version one as well. Okay, so that's the four options. Okay, so that's the manual done, and that's quite a interesting kit there. So, it's not the the newest kit, it's a fairly new iteration of the kit with new decals. So they're the new super decals which are super fine, very nicely printed. And then the kit itself is a little bit aged but it's still very nice and a simple kit. So after it builds up it's still going to look very nice, well proportioned and it gives you options of either the single seat or the twin seat. So that's the TR-1 A or B or better known as the U2 or the Dragon Lady. So thank you for watching.